I had to shit really badly at school the other day and had to use a toilet. Now I think I have an STD. Is this possible? Great question. Things are about to get uncomfortable in here. That's right, because we're answering your most embarrassing medical questions, number 11. All right, let's dive right in. Hello, Dr. Jordan. I have an uncomfortable question. Why men, after they finish urinating and pull up their pants and think they're done, there's some urine left in the pants? Or after finishing urinating, you're empty, but you feel like you have some left in. So this is like a complicated answer because there could be multiple things going on. Most men shake when you're done, right? Because where the bladder basically ends and the muscle of the sphincter ends, you still have your urethra. So there could be a little urine left, which is normal. Sometimes when you feel like there's some left in there or you have what's called urgency, so you feel like you still gotta go, a lot of times this could be a symptom of an infection. Sometimes this could be a urinary tract infection. Sometimes it could be something called urethritis, which is typically caused by a sexually transmitted infection. If that occurs and you feel like every time I go, I feel like I gotta go right after again, you need to get checked out for an infection and have a follow-up exam with your doctor, either your primary care doctor, a urologist, or if you're a female, an OBGYN then you could potentially have some weakening of your pelvic muscles, which could be causing an issue of basically cutting off the urine and so you're having a little bit of dribbling. Other things that could be causing issues that need to get checked out is related to your prostate and then some things having to do with the function of the bladder itself. Most of the time this is normal, but if it's concerning and it's a lot or there are things that you know, are getting worse, which weren't there before, definitely need to get checked out by your doctor. Do your fingernails and hair keep growing after we die? Great question. The answer is no, but it appears that way because our bodies get dehydrated. And so what happens is the skin shrinks around everything. The skin recedes away from the nails, which makes the nails look longer. Same with the hair, the scalp and the tissue of the scalp basically recede away. So it makes it look like your hair is growing. If you cut your penis or severed it while it was erect, would it bleed more than it would if it were flaccid? Yes, because the penis is engorged with blood, you have more blood flow to your penis when it's erect. If there's a laceration to that area, yes, it'll bleed a lot more until your body's other responses kick in to where you clamp down the arterial flow and open the venous flow so blood can get out, and then that way it actually starts to close down itself. But we get penile injuries to the emergency department often where somebody is having intercourse and come out of your partner and then get slammed on and it breaks the penis. You can cause disfigurement at that point and cause a lot of pain. Then you can also have lacerations, obviously, and then you can have priapism, which is the prolonged erection. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. yes. Okay, okay. We have to detumesce that fancy medical word to get all the blood out somehow. I have a question. Is it true women have higher alcohol tolerance than men? If so, how does that work? No, actually, women don't have a higher alcohol tolerance. Women Women drinking the same amount of alcohol as a male will actually become more intoxicated quicker. And it's not based on body weight. That's what we all think. There's certain types of enzymes actually, alcohol dehydrogenase, that men have a little bit more of than related to a female. So if you compare a female and a male at the same weight and they drink the same amount, because of a decreased amount of alcohol dehydrogenase as one of the factors, the likelihood is that the woman will be more intoxicated. We're talking in generalities. There are a lot of different variables that come into play. It has to do with different types of alcohol, different types of tolerances. So there's a lot of other factors, but the one I went into depth about is the one that's related medically that we can identify. What are your thoughts on the controversial topic of showering every day? Good, bad, showering once a year? Don't shower once a year. Showering too often could dry out your skin, dry out your hair, and actually increase a lot of flaking on your scalp and looking like you have dandruff. You're washing away a lot of your good bacteria. You want to also make sure you're not using antibacterial soap. You want bacteria on your skin because it actually helps protect you. So I'm not saying don't shower. I'm saying don't shower once a year and I'm not saying maybe don't shower three times a day. There needs to be moderation. The benefits of showering, obviously, getting fungus off your body, different overgrowths of bacteria. Smells are related to bacteria. That is a reason to stay clean. It has to do with hygiene, your own health, people around you. Healthy is at least a few times a week 
people can shower every day. How often do you guys shower? Let me know in the comments. Could a person live with three lungs? Would they be able to breathe better? I've never come across somebody with three lungs. I've come across many people with less than two lungs because of different surgeries. Could you have an extra lung somewhere else? Maybe we put extra kidneys in people that need kidney transplants. We could, but I've never seen a case of it in my career. Just thinking about this, if you're having more lung tissue and more areas to do gas exchange, could you be more efficient and breathe better or hold your breath longer? Yeah, probably. Still need blood supply to that area as well. Not just extra lung tissue, it's extra blood supply as well, extra pulmonary vessels. So it becomes a lot more complicated system. There is a population of people that live at high altitude their whole lives, multiple generations, and they've evolved over time to actually have physically larger lungs and a larger chest. This gives them more area to do gas exchange, which then increases their lung capacity. They have better functioning lungs to be able to handle the decreased amount of oxygen that is at these altitudes. So they're physically, structurally different than somebody who is at sea level with their lungs. Is it normal to grow gray hairs so early in life? I started growing them when I was around 11, but after a couple years, I'm getting a ton of them. Love your content. Oh. What causes the color of your hair? Melanin. So over time, some people will lose that ability to make melanin in your hair follicle. Thus, the absence of hair color is gray and white. So what causes this? Majority of the time, it is stress or the natural aging process. But it also could relate it to vitamin deficiencies, mineral deficiencies. So if you're young and you're having pigment issues relating to your hair, sometimes we just have hypopigmented areas of where hair growth is versus sporadic ones all over our body. You potentially want to just have the discussion with your doctor about it. Is there a way to make your face slimmer or to remove cheek fat from your face from doing any type of exercise without needing to go through surgery? I was told that working out the body, burning fat on the abs, building muscles on the arms and legs would slowly start to slim down the face. I have been doing these exercises for a long time now and got the body that I want, but my face is still the same. Why is that? I wish we could target body parts to lose fat. Unfortunately, we can't do that. We are our own genetic makeup where we lose fat from nobody really specifically knows. Some people will lose fat super fast. Like for me, if I lose weight, the first place I lose it, boom, right here, this face gets even skinnier. Other people, no matter what they do, their face stays the same, but their body gets super skinny. You can work on cheek muscle exercises that could strengthen the muscles around the face, muscles of mastication. Could it lose the fat around it? If you've tried everything, you've worked out, you've done dieting, you've, there is a surgery out there that reduces or thins out the fat to the sides of your face and the cheeks, but that is a last resort if you can't get it naturally to go away. Please put this health myth to rest. Is yellow dye number five an effective form of birth control? Yellow dye in Mountain Dew is said to kill sperm when men drink it before sex. No! Oh, who thinks this stuff? Oh, nobody told you? No. Oh, this is awkward. Yellow dye number five has had a bad rep its whole career. Effective way of birth control is abstinence, barrier protection, oral contraceptives, or an implantable device such as an IUD. Yellow dye number five is in a lot of things. Twinkies, Mountain Dew, kids juices, name it, it's probably in it. So you would think if it actually caused the death of your sperm that there'd be a lot less humans around. So are there things out there that reduce your sperm count? If you guys are worried about what might be inhibiting or hurting your sperm and your sperm count, check out this video right over here. I had to shit really badly at school the other day and had to use a toilet. Now I think I have an STD. Is this possible? STD was the old term that we used to use and has now changed to STI, which is sexually transmitted infection versus sexually transmitted disease because a lot of these infections can be cured and go away versus a disease is something that that is long term. In general, no. The viruses that are out there, these things don't typically last on a surface long enough to be able to transmit it. And you also have to have open skin to that area that needs to touch it. So it needs to get inside you somehow. And the other thing, bacteria typically can't live that long outside the body. Super crazy rare to get any type of sexually transmitted infection via a toilet seat. If you do become positive with a sexually transmitted infection and you think it's related to the toilet, I would think about what type of 
relations you had with other people and the timing of that. Sometimes infections can beat their head up after two to three days, but it actually could take a little while for infections to show up. Just something to think about. Those were very good, thought provoking, good questions, some embarrassing, some normal good questions to ask a physician. Keep them coming, those questions are great. Send them to the comment section, send them to DM, send them to email, we will take a look at them. If you guys like this episode, definitely binge watch and check out this whole playlist of embarrassing questions. Don't forget to subscribe, turn your bell notifications on. Thank you so much for watching and stay healthy my friends.